Hello, and welcome back to the farm. Today, it is the very beginning of February, and we're continuing to plant our cold weather vegetables. Today, we're going to plant cauliflower. Now, cauliflower is one of those vegetables that uh, either you like or you don't. A lot of people don't. It works good on salads and a lot of other things, but if you are on one of those ketogenic diets, you'll see a lot of your keto products made from cauliflower, like bread, for instance, is made from, uh, in some cases, made from cauliflower uh, flour. Today we're gonna grow the Twister cauliflower, and it is a early fall, late, excuse me, late fall, early spring vegetable which tolerates cold weather really well, but doesn't tolerate hot weather. So it's important for us to get the seed in as early as we can to get it germinated and up and go. So when we get relatively close to the frost date, we can get this thing in the ground. Now, yes, you can plant cauliflower prior to frost. The frost won't kill it. A freeze will kill it though. So you have to be kind of touchy about how you do these things, but nonetheless, we're gonna be ready. So let's get started and plant our cauliflower today. Now, we're going to use our standard seed trays that we always use, the ones that I'm always telling you that you need to get instead of the cheapy ones, but let me show you something that can happen after you have these things a number of years. If you look at this particular seed tray, you can see that one end of it's a little bit boogered up. Now, what happened here? Well, when we clean these up, We'll put them in the dishwasher to sterilize them and finish the cleaning process. And as you can see, this melted a little bit. It's not going to stop us from using the tray. They're relatively expensive, by the way. This tray is about five, six years old, but it's a little distorted. So if you see that, yep, that's what's going on. So anyway, don't let that stop you if you bend one up in the dishwasher. And certainly, whatever you do, don't complain to the missus about your seed tray being all boogered up. Just a little marital tip there. Okay, let's get our dirt, regular potting soil of your choice. Remember, potting soil or seed starting mix or whatever they're calling it these days is just sterile dirt. What that means is they've taken the fungus and all the other junk out of it so that when your seed is put in the ground, put under very moist conditions, it doesn't rot before it comes up. Now, if you elect to use dirt from outside, you're going to have to sterilize that dirt or you're asking for trouble. Just saying. Anyway, let's put our dirt in. Can't have too much dirt in these things, by the way. As you can see, it's filling up pretty nice. Kind of scoop it around and get all the dirt in holes. Always got a little extra. And we're gonna kind of push it down just a little bit. And we will do our Karate Kid wax on, wax off, and try to push the dirt down in. Now you can use a two by four or something to push it down too if you don't want to be a martial arts person. Just saying. And so you go ahead and you push your dirt down into your tray. And you've got pretty good compression there. So we're going to drop the tray and force it to settle some more. If you notice, especially up along in here, okay, there's a big one right there. Our dirt has dropped. So let's put some more dirt in. Now, for those of you that have watched my channel before, it's a pretty standard procedure. We've been doing our flats like this for years, decades even. Hate to date myself, but that's the fact. Okay, so we have our 
our dirt in pretty much the way we want it. There's a little more we can add over here. What this does, it adds a, a layer of isolation for each seed. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our seeds here. You can see we got them from Haas. And we use them because they're really, their vegetables are set up for hot and humid weather. Now they don't have hot and humid like we do, but they still have some pretty hot weather down there. Now, one thing Haas does that a lot of the other seed people don't do is they give you a a little row marker and it gives you all the different statistics and stuff I don't know if you can see that or not but it tells you your 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 seed spacing and row spacing and all the other stuff that goes with that very nice touch by the way very nice I've never got these from anybody but Haas and we buy seed from here there and everywhere so we'll definitely use that now we're going to use our imp cedar right here which allows us to use non-pelletized seed. Pelletized seed, at least for us over the years, once we get the seed here and if we don't use it, we want to use it the next year, it has a tendency not to germinate quite as well. So we prefer to use non-pelletized seeds as well as it's not as expensive. Now, if it's something we have to put in a seeder, we definitely have to have pelletized seed. But for, you know, just seedlings that we're going to transplant, not so much. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pour our, our seeds here. Ooh. All right. And there we go. And so we'll just take our stuff and we will start using our imp seeder and putting our seeds in each hole. I really like this imp seeder. I don't know if they even still sell them anymore. I hadn't hadn't gone to the website and looked because I had, really don't have a need. This thing is, is, is super heavy duty and uh, it's done a great job for us. By the way, we get, we get no uh, affiliate or anything. We get nothing from anybody. We use what works and what has always worked here. And a lot of our stuff we bought 20, 30 years ago and we'll continue to use it. And I hope my children and my grandchildren continue to use it long after I am gone. So we'll see. They certainly all know how to do it though. But as you can see, I just put the put the seeds in the holes here. And we kind of go from there. I don't know if you can hear that or not. That's one of our uh little girl goats out there that uh we're about to have uh goat kids and we'll have a whole bunch of them by the way I, I, don't, I don't know how many we'll have you never know they can have uh, singles doubles or triples normally and so you can have you know 50 or you can have 10 depending on the year but anyway when they get close they, they get a little cranky cows do the same thing but they're not nor normally as vocal they get vocal when they're hungry or when they want something but our female girls, our does out there will uh, just yell just to yell. And there you go. We're good. Our imp cedar has done it for us again. And we will take our row marker and we will put it right here. That way when I put this in the germination chamber, I know what it is. We also have other things in there. Now, we're gonna take our vermiculite and cover it across the top. Why vermiculite? It keeps the moisture in. If you want a good germination, I can't stress this enough. Vermiculite, vermiculite, vermiculite. Put it everywhere. The pros have been using it for years. There's no reason why you can't. It's, it's pretty inexpensive. And so, why not? You do all this work putting seeds in. Just cover it up on the top. Just like this.
and there you go. Now, we are going to water in our cauliflower. We always water from the bottom. <clears throat> it used to be back in the day, here the guineas out there, uh, back in the day we would water from the top. Well, it not only screws up the top soil and your seed goes deeper than it needs to and you lose some of them, but it doesn't promote near the root growth that bottom watering does. So always water your seedlings from the bottom. The water will soak up and keep everything the way it needs to be. All of a sudden, before you know it, you got seeds shooting up everywhere and they look exactly the way they're supposed to. Nice and healthy and strong. So let's put some water in this. Now I fill almost to the top and let the water soak in. Sometimes this thing will even float. That's okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for about 15, 20, 30 minutes and you'll see the difference in the vermiculite which tells us it's ready to go on your grow mat, under your lights, or in your germination chamber in our case. So I'll be back in about 30 minutes. Stay tuned. As you can see, it's been about 30 minutes and the water's starting to permeate throughout the vermiculite. Now, while we wait in those 30 minutes, I'll walk down the hen house. Got a couple of Americana eggs. I got a green one and a blue one. Nice. Egg production is down this time of year, by the way, but it's starting to pick back up. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this flat, put it in the germination chamber. I've already got another one in there. The temperature set is 78 degrees Fahrenheit and let her go. These will take about three days. We'll start to see germination at that point. Once we get to that point, we will take them and put them under the lights. Now, let's talk about the germination piece of it, for instance, uh, for just a minute. What happens is a lot of people just think that you put seeds in the ground, wait a few days, add a little water, and poof, everything comes up. The germination process is half the battle to getting everything to grow. There's, there's always small problems along the way. You've got potential disease problems there and the else. But if you can get the seed up out of the ground, you're well on your way to harvesting whatever vegetable that you want. Now, it would be easier to direct seed, but in February, especially early February around here, that's not possible. We can do, we've got some uh, elephant garlic up there that, that's still in the ground and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but very, very little of anything. We've got some kale up there and there's some, uh, some turnip cover crop, but mostly the stuff that we're going to spend a lot of time eating in the fall and late or excuse, yeah and uh, in the fall and in the spring is right here so germination if you do what we tell you to do here it's pretty a b c d and it works great so let's put this in the germination chamber and see what we get there's our temperature it's currently 76.2 in the dirt that's in there but it's heating up to 78 i might bump that up a tad but nonetheless, let's open it up and see where we're at. And there's the stuff we've already got in there. As you can see, there's our cauliflower in the germination chamber. And we'll come back in three or four days and check on it. You know, with the cost of food continually going up and uh, fertilizer shortage, some seed shortages, the whole thing, why aren't more people trying to grow their own food? now? You don't have to grow it on the scale that we have here. You could just grow a little backyard victory garden kind of thing like they did during World War II. I realize most of you don't remember all these things, but nonetheless, it helped feed the family when things got rough, just in case. That doesn't even mention the fact that if you grow it yourself, there's some self-satisfaction there and it tastes better. You might think about it. Until next time. I'll see you down at the barn.